Oh, hey guys, it is day three. I just started printing, printing the gearbox. Uh, I printed the gears already, so I'm just printing the frame. It's gonna take about four hours, uh, so that's a while, but um, uh, yeah, so that'll be done probably around uh, one or two, probably two, most likely two o'clock. Yeah, so. Uh, I gotta make sure that keeps going, and then in the meantime, I will take care of some class, but I'll get back to you guys when that is done. Alright, so it is now the middle of day three, and I uh, had to make some, some changes. So, this is the arm. showed you guys that last night. Um, and as you can see, it can it can move. But the problem is so. And here's the gearbox. I spent all day printing this, and so believe me, uh, what I'm about to tell you is upsetting. But you know, uh, I talked about how this is actually an inverse mechanical advantage. You can see as I'm pulling this lever how fast this this dowel is turning. So. So fast, like I can spin, I can turn this. See, to make one full rotation, how far do I have to go? There's, there's the hole. That's one full rotation, and I barely move this at all. One. So we have one, two, three, four, and you can notice this, this. Listen to that noise. Very grindy. So. Like I said, this is an inverse mechanical advantage, uh, meaning that driving it from this edge is super, super easy. And you can see that this part moves really slowly, but it takes almost no force to move. But over here, any amount of friction uh, in this joint gets multiplied by 27 into this joint. And so that's what you're hearing is the friction. And as it turns out, I had already tried kind of like jankily hooking this up to here and then, you know, pulling it. And you know, it could kind of work, but this gets stuck so often with any amount of friction that at one point, a uh, tooth snapped. And so that's not what you want. You can see this, this, this stage, you can see the tooth snapped. So that's not what you want. So I'm gonna have to figure out something different and I'm guessing that you know, I, I probably probably won't be able to have a system that uh, works where I just pull it just a little bit and it. Let's see, I can't even. Yeah, so I can just pull it. So I, I was planning on going like this, and then the whole arm would bend down, but I don't think that's going to work. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make it as easy as possible for me force-wise, but I will have to spin it a bunch of times. So, I'm going to implement a hand crank system. So, it's going to be, I'm going to have just one of these stages, but in reverse. So, I'm going to have something like this, but the big gears on it, and then something else with a, with a small gear. So, it's going to be big gear, small gear, and then the small gear, I'll have a hand crank to turn it. And so what that'll do is it'll be three times easier for me force-wise uh, to do it than uh, just like that. But uh, I'll have to spin it three times as much. So I, I believe this whole arm, you can see maybe here I'm pulling it about, yeah, it's about three inches or so. So it'll be nine inches around the circumference of this dowel. And this is about a half inch, so that's about 1.5 inches circumference. And so I'll, it'll, I'll have to spin it a total of 9 divided by 1.5, which is 6. So I'll have to spin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in order for this to go all the way down. And that might seem like a lot, however, say that I replace the hand crank with a motor, a very fast motor. It won't have to pull a whole lot, but it'll have a lot of control 
over where this ends up. And it'll be really fast, so those six times will seem like nothing, and this arm will move just like a robot would. But that's, that's far off. Right now I'm just doing the hand crank, so I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so here we have uh, what I'm thinking about. So I'm gonna have two of these uh, hand crank gearboxes mounted right next to each other. And the problem with the hand crank is that I can't have them back to back to back anymore. So it's gonna take up more space, but I think it'll be okay. And you can see they're much smaller. So it's just one stage gear. So uh, I'm gonna have two of these mounted on each side. Uh, and so I, I'm gonna have three sides, so I'm gonna end up with six. But I'm gonna start with just three, as I said before. So I can start with uh, just like these two. Uh, that's what I'm gonna start with. And I'm gonna print uh, the base uh, for that. So I'm gonna have to implement these into this design, which is what I've been working on. So this is what I'm thinking. Uh, one more thing. Cool. Yeah, so this is what I'm thinking. Um, very skeletal base platform. We'll see if it holds up to some of the bending stresses. Um, if not, then we will make it thicker, but I think this is this is definitely gonna work. I mean, well, I don't want to say definitely. There's a good chance it's gonna work. It's just gonna be that this crank is gonna to have to be turned a bunch of times, which isn't great, but you know, it'll we'll be able to see it move at the very least, and then maybe you know eventually these could be replaced by motors, and then we could see this really start to go. So yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm gonna get to printing. All right, so I finished assembling the new gearbox slash crank mechanism. This is actually a lot smaller than it was before, especially considering that these are two controls, one muscle here, one muscle here, then the last one. So you've got these these two cranks and it's gonna, it's not like attached, uh, but it's, it's going to be once they're mounted in the base together. So I wanna do this project with no glue, no screws, nothing, just 3D printing. The only thing that's not 3D printed is the uh, string uh, for the muscles. Now, the um, the thing with this, like I said before, is since I'm actually getting a mechanical advantage now of three, because there's eight teeth on the top gear and 24 teeth on the bottom gear, so that's a mechanical advantage of three. So because of that, it's going to be a lot easier for me to pull. For instance, uh, however hard I need to pull this manually to bend it, it's going to be three times easier now. So but the issue is I'm going to have to crank this like crank, 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 crank in order to get the arm to bend. And that's not such a big deal. Uh, if it works well, 
uh, that's even better because I didn't even add that much of a mechanical advantage here. So if it works well and it's really easy, that means it's going to be really easy to attach a motor here. And then, of course, that's not the ultimate goal. Well, that is the ultimate goal, but that's not the goal that I have right now. Right now, I just want to operate it mechanically with just 3D printed parts, and I think it'll work. So I'm going to print the base, and I will get back to you guys tomorrow. Day three. Hopefully, it would be crazy if this gets done within a week. That would be really nice. I think it's possible. I think I can do it. Hey guys, it is now the morning of day four, I think. Yeah, I started this on Tuesday, it's now Friday. So, uh, I printed this base throughout the night, and as you can see, it works great. Um, this is a press fit, so I kind of hammered this into here. I might have to widen these holes in the future because it took quite a bit of force to get those in, and they are definitely not coming out. Uh, and also, while I was hammering it in, <laughs> I kind of broke the top because uh, I didn't use a whole lot of infill, but it still works. So, we're just going to carry on uh, and test our method. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to print a couple more pieces, the pillar pieces that go thread into here. And then, yeah, we're going to see, uh, we're going to put it all together. Okay, so we have these standoffs and screws printed. Now I'm gonna assemble it and uh, it's pretty good. So the thing is, is if this mechanism works, we're gonna have to redesign this base to fit uh, six of these cranks. So there's two here. I'm gonna have two here and two here and then maybe one in the back to control the eventual gripper. But that part is gonna have to be designed later. It's pretty amazing that you can 3D print these fasteners. I mean, they're not very strong. I mean, obviously, comparatively to metal fasteners, but it's pretty incredible. So, let's see. I can't even get this whole thing in the, in the shot. It's... Okay. So now we have the full thing in the shot. Um. So we are going to put some muscles on this guy.
All right. Now, I can bend. So we go. One side. really good just so you can see I'd say it's a really good start and the good thing is I almost forgot, but it's a good thing that these aren't completely tight, because if you think about it, this one, if this one moves here, this muscle has to extend so you can see it pulling more. So it can extend this far, pretty much. Even, yeah, just about that far. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is print more. I want uh, four more cranks, actually five more cranks, and about one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, 14 more of these triangles. So that's gonna take about 14 hours to print in total. It, sh it could get done by tomorrow night. So this is, this is day five. Um, no, this is day four. This is day four. So this is, this is day four. And yeah, I'm going to basically make a longer arm. And more control of the arm. Like that. Alright, let's do it. Thanks for watching, guys. That was part two of the tentacle video. And I just want to say I do miss going out and helping people, as you can see me doing in this ancient footage of myself. And it's important that we all stay inside and not make physical contact with other people, especially those people who can't afford. Uh, healthcare. It's, those are the types of people that I would usually help, so I'm, I need to stay away from them. I don't know if I could pass something to them and it'd be really bad. But I just want to point out that we are actually in the middle of two public health epidemics, and one is obviously worse than the other, but I want to bring up this because there are more problems in the world. So the Astros are starting a petition. If you don't know who the Astros are, just watch some other videos on my channel. The Astros are starting a petition to combat the uh, growing number of unreported sexual assaults on college campuses. It's a super important cause, so I urge you guys to go sign the petition at petitions.whitehouse.gov slash stand dash speak dash out. And yeah, go ahead and sign it. They need 100,000 signatures by the end of April, so if they need all the help they can get. It's a really good cause. And obviously, I want to thank my patrons for this video. I want to thank Christopher Jordan, Green Ninja, Caleb Choice, Nicholas Sykes, Spider Kid, Auto Inc., The Arachnids, The Blood Spider, and Vigilantics. They are the reason why I've been able to do everything that I've done, and I'm super happy that they're supporting me. So, if you want to support me, go visit my Patreon. We're all falling on economic hard times. I'm finding less times to work, less money for projects. Everyone's in the same boat, so I'm not special. But you can go support me if you want, I'm, I'd be fine with that, but I would rather you go support the COVID-19 relief effort. Uh, go donate to the World Health Organization. They have a COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund. You can help them fight it. They're the ones who are going to get us through this, along with all the healthcare workers in the world. So go help them out and you know, thank your local doctor, thank any healthcare workers you may know. Look out for each other, guys. This is a difficult time. And with that, I would like to sign off. So thank you guys for watching. Part 3 will come out very soon. Like I said, the project is already complete. So I can guarantee that the finished tentacle is indeed finished. And I will see you guys soon. Stay amazing. And stay healthy.
and wash your hands.